low sunshine up to 83 today. We're at 59 right now. Joining us live in the Carroll Bank and Trust Studios, his new song is called Didn't I? We're going to play it in just a few moments, doing very well. Sitting firmly inside the top 40, James Wesley. Good morning. How are you, man? Good morning. I'm good. How are you, Kelly? I'm doing well. Good to have you here, brother. It's good to be here. Let's talk about you, man. You grew up in Kansas? I grew up in southeast Kansas, a little bitty small town, 200 people. You were saying hunting didn't kind of remind you I of that feel, neck of the woods. I feel at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do. No kidding, man. Yeah, 200 people in my hometown. Were you interested in country music growing up was that what they played in I was always oh yeah, yeah yeah it's always what I, I mean I grew up working in the garage you know okay um, with my grandfather and, and dad but you know we always listened to a lot of the old 50s and 60s you know growing up in there yeah. and then my grandmother introduced me to traditional country music you know, I mean, she played Conway Twitty and George uh, Jones and Ray Price. And, don't get no better now. Oh, man, no. Did I see where you kind of started singing in public in church? I did. Okay. Started in church. Yeah, man. Singing uh, some of the old gospel hymnals? Well, yeah, yeah, a few of those. Yeah? Yeah. And then uh, I went from I went from singing, I kind of went the opposite direction. I went from singing in church to the clubs and the honky <laughs> You fell off the wagon, didn't you? Oops. Yeah. I did. I've been off the wagon for a while now. But that was as a teenager, wasn't it? Yeah, I started, uh, I started probably 13, I guess I was probably 13, 14 years old singing in church. And yeah. then, you know, started singing in the clubs. I Went to college, went to junior college in, in uh, Parsons, and then went on over to Independence, Kansas. And right. There was an old Best Western on the west side of town. That was my first, my first, uh, I guess, gig that I ever had. <laughs> and I uh, took my guitar in there and and uh, talked the the owner of the place. Name was Ed, and I talked him into letting me come in and and try it out on a Friday Friday night and see what happened. And of course. He paid me 50 bucks nice. and to rent my equipment. I'm thinking, I have no equipment. What am I going to do? <laughs> All right. So I went to the music store and I uh, rented some equipment, and the equipment cost me 45 bucks. So. <laughs> you made a five dollar bill. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. At the old dude drop in. I had enough gas to get halfway home. Anyway. <laughs> so when did you make the move to Nashville? I moved in '06, and when I first moved, when I first moved to Nashville. I work construction. Yeah, and that's what I did. Now a lot of guys when they move to Nashville, they're young, they're single, you know. But you were married and had kids when you moved, didn't you? Yeah, I had two two little ones. Was that tough on the family? Was it tough to kind of talk them into that? Sort well, of you know, I mean, when I moved, I moved from Southeast Kansas and I moved to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, to audition for a show, yeah. a country music show, their live country music show, and I ended up getting it. And um, you know, that's where I met my wife. Okay. So it all worked out good. She was in the music. You know, her mom and dad uh, had a theater there in Eureka uh -huh. Springs, Pine Mountain Jamboree. And, and so I did that, you know, every night for quite a few years. You know, I'd get up in the morning, I did maintenance. After after we got after I got married, my father in law realized that I could do all this stuff, so he put me to work. You were earning your keep. Exactly. So I'd do that from six to noon, and then from noon to six, I did a landscape service that I'd started. Gotcha. And then I do the show every night but Sunday. So you moved to Nashville so, and sign a deal how quickly? Man, I actually auditioned. Well, I moved here in 06 and uh, they flew me out to California because the owner of the label, uh, Benny Brown, was from California. So we flew out there and I did a showcase for just, uh, it was for dealership. He has a couple of dealerships, uh, car dealerships in California. So we did did the showcase for just regular people, which was awesome to right. get to do, you know. I mean, they that were there cool. for the music. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, man, we had a good time. They enjoyed the music, but it was a year later before I even signed to the signed the deal. So Now, when he signed you, since he owned those car dealerships, did you get a new car? I did. <laughs> did you do it? I did. <laughs> I, did. <laughs> I was hoping I'd get a new Chevy truck out of the deal. <laughs> they, gave, they gave him an old trade-in Pinto. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So you signed the deal there, but then things didn't work out as planned. And uh, Did I read where you even contemplated about leaving Nashville? Well, you know... This was like um, this is like my second my second time around. Yeah, I had a deal. I had a deal with Warner Brothers. Okay, okay. That was the time that I actually did go back. I got you. I thought, man, this is crazy. I've yeah. been here six years, you know, and I was signed to a deal for six years. Never released the album. Right. And I uh, had a video and, and everything. And but I moved. I did. I moved back home. Moved back to Arkansas. And um, you know, I put my life on hold for six years. And that's when I moved back. And we had two little ones. Yeah. And um, and then um, I've been, you know, like I say, I was I was working. I felt like I was just, you know, kind of burning the candle at both ends. And and I came home one day and I told my wife. I said, you know, something's telling me, you know, to move to Nashville. Something's telling me to give it another shot. 
And so that's what we did. We put, I told her, I said, here's, let's do this right here. I said, let's put the house, put the house on the market. Let's give it six months to a year. If we don't sell the house within that time, we're meant to stay. That'd be a sign. Fair and enough. Four months later, we sold the house. And to this day, there's still homes for sale that went on the market at the same time ours did. Like there you so, go. <laughs> thank God. That's it's it. faith, I, brother. You know, so it is. It's all about faith. faith. Yeah, it's just stepping out, you yeah. know, and, and we definitely did that. And, then, you know, of course, I... On the way to Nashville, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what have I done? Yeah. I've got my kids in a U-Haul truck sure. and we're... <laughs> Second you know, guessing. Thinking, I have lost my mind. I have lost my mind. <laughs> you're, you're the primary breadwinner. you got a family and mouths to feed. I understand. Oh, man. So yeah. we moved to Nashville, you know, and, and we get here and, and, you know, I was I was working construction. That was the first job that I, that I had. And I helped build the fountains and lay the stone at the Nashville Symphony. No kidding. Yeah, so that was my first job. The corner on the corner of uh, not a lot of people know this, but on the corner of the Mumbrium, facing the Country Music Hall of Fame, where the Recording Angels at. Right. I helped pour the concrete, the pedestal there, and we put the uh, uh, laid the stone around that. But underneath the angels' feet, I put my name in the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He left That's his mark. Man. Yeah. We're talking. Well, at least I'll leave a mark somewhere. You got it. James Wesley live in the Carroll Bank and Trust studio with us this morning. Coming up, we'll talk to him about touring with Taylor Swift, also performing this Saturday at the Grand Ole Opry. You guys want to do a song live in the studio for us this Sure, time? you bet. You bet. Who's your guitar player? This is Brian. Brian, Brian Tracer. Tracer. Yeah. Good. He's an Iowa boy. What song you want to do for us? You know what? Let's do real. Knock it out, brother. Yeah. James Wesley live in the CBT studios on 100.9 The Farm. One, two, three. channels and there ain't much more tonight But reality shows about some folks so cold I A pretty girl cries cause she won't get a rose and she'll find love next year on her own show And they call that real Real is a handy hole in 57 Well, let's hope so. Yeah. Um, you know, they've been talking about it, hopefully here in the next month, you know.